Hello Academy students, Coach Zane here, and I just wanted to go over some golf fundamentals for you for the practice that got canceled last week. Today, I'm going to go over three basic things. Okay, Number one, we will go over fundamental terminology in the sport in golf. This includes questions like what is open, what is closed, square, etc. Number two, we will talk about scoring and actually playing the game of golf because that's why we practice, right? We practice so that we then can go play out on the course. And number three, we will go over the best ways to get better at golf quicker, all right? So without further ado, let's get started. Hello guys, uh, welcome to the Intermediate Academy Program classroom. Um, today we're just gonna go over some quick fundamentals, okay? So obviously, whenever we're talking about golf, we all know what a golf ball is, we all know what a golf club is. That's not what we're gonna be talking about. What we're gonna be talking about today is more of the in-depth terminology that we use as golf professionals and that you need to understand if we're trying to help you with your swing. So the first thing that we have to understand is what is a club face? Well, the face of the club is this part right in here. Okay, that's this part that I'm highlighting right here. That's the face of the golf club. Okay, the face of the golf club, uh, uh, simple why we call it that, because it's facing the target, it's facing the ball we're about to hit. Right? That's why we call it the face. All right, You have the back of the golf club. The back is going to be in red. So we have the back of the golf club. Okay, You have the hosel. The hosel of the club is right here. Okay, It's the, it's the part that, is, that has the stem on it um, that attaches to the shaft. Kind of looks like a hosel of, of a hose, right? Of a, of a faucet. Okay, that kind of deal. Um, and then you've got the different parts of the face or the different parts of the club head, right? We also have the toe we're going to do in pink. Right here, this is the toe. And then the last but certainly not least in light blue, we have the heel. That's right next to the hosel. So where, where we actually want to hit this ball, right, the center of the face is right in here. Okay, this is called the, right there, it's called the sweet spot of the golf club. Okay, and that's right there in the middle of the face in orange. Okay, so pink is the toe, okay, that's the toe of the club. We have the uh, light blue, which is the uh, heel of the club. The green, and green is the hosel of the club. The back of the club is in red, and underneath all that, just like I showed you before, is the yellow, which is the face of the club. So that is, is comprised of the toe, the heel, and that center area. So we actually want to always hit the ball right in that center area. We got to imagine that there's like a, a target, a bullseye, right here in the middle of the club face. Okay? So we've got to worry, we got to look at that. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about the different positions of that golf club head, right? and how it's going to impact the, uh, the ball flight, where that ball is gonna go, All right? So first off, right, this right here, this club head right here, let me go ahead and erase it, erase this. Okay, so this club head right here, right here in the middle, this one right here is going to be what we refer to as a square club face, okay? So we can imagine that this blue line right here and the, the one I'm going over with red, that's the target line. That's where our target is. It's somewhere out there to the left. Okay, So we're looking at it from the top down like you're about to hit the ball. So if I have this club face angled like this where the grooves are pointing up and down, right? that's what we call square. Okay, A square club face is going to result in that ball traveling, at least initially, straight down that target line. So anytime we see that ball start off at our target, regardless of whether it turns right or left in the air, that means the club face, whenever we hit the ball, was square. All right? So that club face was square. The next part, okay, this next club head right here, to the right of that first club head, this one, Oop, let me erase that. This one right here 
is what we would typically refer to as a closed club face. So that club face has these lines as the grooves pointing a little bit to the left up. Now remember, this is all reversed for lefties, right? So it's pointing up to the left and or down to the right, okay? So that right there, wherever we see that club face making that kind of angle with the target line, that's what we would call a closed club face, okay? A closed face. And a closed face, okay, is going to result in it, that ball initially traveling, at least initially, traveling to the left first. For a lefty, it'd be traveling to the right first. So that's gonna result in that ball flight, okay? Now that ball can, again, either turn to the right or turn to the left, but at least it's going to start off on the line where the club face is pointing. The reason this is the case is because we call, and this is what we uh, golf bros call, I mean, this is why we call the club face the king. The club face is the king, meaning wherever that club face is pointing, okay, that ball starts. So if the ball starts left, that club face was closed. Okay? All right. So now let's go on to the next one. The next one right here, we can see that that club face is pointing up to the right. Okay, up and to the right. So if we look at the club face angle, the grooves are pointing up right and down left, at least from our perspective. So this is what we would call an open face, okay? Because it's an open face, this ball is going to start, at least initially, to the right of our target. Now again, that ball can turn left, that ball can turn right, but it's initially going to start out to the right. Okay, so if that ball starts out to the right, that's going to be an open face. Closed, it's gonna to start to the left. Square, it's gonna start right at our target. All right? Now, let's go a little bit more in depth. If you're following me, please, please keep following along, okay? So now let's talk a little bit about that path. So we know that the club face has a little bit to do with where that ball goes, but the next thing that we have to talk about real quick is the path of the club. So the path of the club, okay, is going to be dictated by where that club is traveling whenever we're hitting uh, the golf ball, where that, what, what path that club is on whenever we're hitting the golf ball. We got to think of it almost like train tracks. Okay, so we've got, we've got our target line there. Now our path is always going to be arced, right? It's always going to be arced. Whether you're right-handed, left-handed, it's always going to be arced. It's going to be on a bit of an arc like this, right? Because I'm swinging around my body. I'm swinging up and down, but I'm also swinging around my body. Okay, so we have to think of an imaginary line. So that's what we would call a square path. So if I have a square face, let's just go ahead and put this. If I have a square face, if this club face is square, and I have the path square, that ball is going to start straight and stay straight, right? But we have to understand that the ball isn't always, uh, it's very hard for the club to travel on that straight path, okay? Usually what happens is a, 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 you know, a golfer will have a typical ball flight. So sometimes you'll either see if we just imagine looking at it from, the, from behind the line, if we're looking out into the range and here's the flag in the distance, okay? We may either see a few, we may see three different ball flights, right? We could see that ball, if we hit a good one, start from left and go to right. We could see it start right and go left. Or we could see it just go pretty darn straight. Most people do not fit into this category. Most people will either fit into that fade or the draw category. Okay, A fade is when a right-handed golfer hits a shot with a closed face and swings from out to in. Out just means that the club is coming from outside this square path. So it's coming from this side of this blue line. All right, inside is whenever we refer to that club coming from this side 
of this blue line. So whenever it's coming into out, we can think of it almost like soccer. If my foot is going from this side of the ball to this side of the ball, I'm putting the spin on the ball like this, and that ball will start wherever that club face is pointing and then turn to the left. If I have the, my foot going from this side of the ball to this side of the ball and cutting across it, right, that means it's going to travel to the right, okay, Regard, uh, not regardless, but dictated by it's going to start out wherever that club face is pointing. So we just have to understand that whenever we're talking about path, okay? So just to reiterate, I know this is get this can get kind of confusing, but just to reiterate, all right, you have an inside that path, or sorry, an outside of that path, which is out here, if that club head was out here, and traveling along this way, and you have inside that path, which is when the club is right here, and traveling that way, all right? The inside path is going to cause more of the spin this way, and the outside of the path is going to cause more of the spin that way, okay? When the ball is spinning this way right here, it's going to turn that direction. When the ball is having this spin, the ball is going to turn this direction, all right? So it's not, it's not a hard and fast rule. It does it is determined by that club face. But if we have that square club face, that's what's going to happen. Okay? So let's go ahead and erase all that. So we just have to understand that whenever we're talking about club face, what is the path as well? So we have three different shots right here, uh, three different club heads, right? So let's just go ahead and I want you to pause the video and I want you to guess for me. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do a little guessing game. And we're going to determine what, each, what the ball is going to do with each of these club faces. So first and foremost, let's think about this ball. Okay, we're going to start square club face with an out to in path. Okay, go ahead and pause the video now and guess what that ball will do. All right, so here's the answer. If I have a square face with an out to in path, that ball is going to start straight at the target and it's going to turn off to the right, okay? Necessarily, it will turn to the right with a square face and an out to in path, okay? That ball will start this way and then turn to the right, okay? So that's question number one. Question number two, okay? Go ahead and pause the video after I, after I give you these instructions, all right? So now we've got a square uh, club face, and now we've got an in to out path. So we've got the club traveling this way. Go ahead, pause the video now, and guess what will happen. All right, so Let's go ahead, uh, so it's going in to out, right? Which means that ball is going to be spinning this direction. So if you remember from before, the ball spinning that direction is going to cause that ball to start, the square face is gonna make that ball start straight and then turn to the left, okay? So we're causing this spin right here. That ball is going to start straight and then turn to the left, okay? So now, Let's go ahead and talk about the next one. And obviously, obviously, you know, the square face, if we think about square face and square path, if I've just got a square place, square face, square path, that ball starts straight and stays straight, doesn't it? Okay, we don't need to pause the video for that one. That's pretty easy. Now let's talk about the closed. So this is, is where this is where it gets a little bit more challenging. So let's go ahead and talk about this. Alright? So right now we've got a closed club face. And let's go ahead and imagine that the ball is now right here, okay? And we've got that club face traveling from out to in. Go ahead and pause the video now and guess what will happen. All right, if you said that ball is going to start left and travel 
just straight left, you are right. Straight left, you are right. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So why does the ball not turn back to the right? Okay, It might, it might turn back to the right. It just depends on what's going to happen with the, with the path. So if that club face is what we call open to path, so here's the path, right? Path is out to in. If that club face is closed to the target line, so if we imagine the fake line going like this, if the club face is closed to the target line, which means it's going to start left, but open to the path, right? Open to the path, then that ball will start left and turn back right. All right, so that's usually what will happen, okay? The next possibility is that it just, you know, we have a closed club face and it's so closed that even if we come out over top, if the ball hits with no spin, meaning it's the same, or the ball is square to that path, or the, sorry, the club is square to that path, the ball will just start left and stay left, okay? So if you said either of those answers, you are correct. That ball will never, if the club is closed, that ball will never start to the right unless we shank it. That ball will never start this way, okay? It can't happen, all right? So now that we've got that down, let's go ahead and talk about the club face closed with the path in to out. What will happen with the club face closed and the path in to out? Go ahead and pause the video now and take a guess. All right, so if you said that ball will start left and turn left, you are right. The ball can be closed to the path, right? The ball can be closed to the path and open to the target, and then that ball turns into a soft draw because we still have that spin, don't we? We still have that spin, okay? But here's the issue. If that is so closed that it's closed to the, to the target still, that ball will start left and just hook, okay? It will just keep going left, all right? Keep turning in the air, all right? Now, let's talk about the golf club, all right? So here's the golf club again. That's closed, all right? Now, if here's the thing, if I just start it here, and it depends on how in to out it is, if I just start it here, right, square to square, I think we know exactly what's going to happen. So it's square with a closed club face, right? That means that ball is going to start turning, right? Because it's different, that club face is different than the path, right? So it's closed to path, so that ball will start to the left and keep going to the left, okay? So the best way of thinking about, the best way of thinking about what is that ball going to do is just thinking about the relation of the club face to the club path. If the club is open, to the path it's traveling on. So say it's open to, so say the path is like this, not the target line. Say maybe the target line is right where that's pointing, right? Then what's going to happen is, is that ball is going to start at wherever that club face is aiming and then start turning to the right, okay? I know it's confusing. I know it's confusing. It may take a little, a few watches of this video. But I just want you guys to know that, you know, this is, you know, this is just terminology that you, you may, and it takes a little while to learn too. But the more you try and understand it, the more you'll understand whenever we're telling you things out here at practice. The very last thing is going to be an open face. So we have an open face right here, okay? That ball is going to start to the right, okay? No matter what, that ball is going to start to the right. If I swing square... That ball will start right and keep turning more right. If I go out to in, that would be very hard to hit, but that will start right and then turn right. 
If I go in to out, now that ball will start right and stay right. You see? So that ball will start right every time that club face is open. If that club face is open a little bit, and we swing more into out so that club face is closed to path, then we get that draw. Okay? But the club face won't be very open. Most of the time, whenever the ball ends up going to your target, you'll be closer to this square position. Okay? It will just depend on whether it's just a touch open or a touch closed. Okay? If it's a touch open, right, and I'm swinging into out, that ball will just start right and finish left right at my target. If I have it a touch closed and I swing out to in, it's just going to start left and turn right, finishing at my target. Okay? So we really, we just want to know, right, if we see that ball, the whole point of this is if we see that ball starting a certain direction, we have to understand the relationship that that has between the faces, the different faces, okay? So if the face is square, that ball starts off at the target. If the face is closed, that ball starts to the left. If the face is open, that ball starts to the right, okay? All right. So now let's go on to our next section. Hey guys, um, so here's the next part. So this is going to be about playing the, playing the game, right? How do I play the game? Play the game. So we have different scores for different holes, right? So we have different scores that we're trying to get on the hole we're on, all right? And that's what we call par. So that par, right, is listed on the scorecards right here. Okay, so we have a par four, par three, we even have some par fives on here. Now, usually what you'll see is you'll see 72 be the par for the course, all right? That just means it's all these pars added up, right? And that's what we're trying to strive for getting in golf. Um, most people, they don't shoot par. So don't get confused. Don't think just because you're not shooting par, you're not doing something right. Um, par is super hard to get. It's something to really, really work for. You know, some people work for par their entire life and, and don't get to it. But yeah, so this part of this course is a 71, which means it's one less par than normal. All right, one less stroke than normal. So a stroke is just a shot, right? It's just a single shot. A stroke is what we call a shot, right? One shot on a hole is a stroke, all right? And so we call them strokes just because that's what we call the swing, the entirety of the swing and hitting the ball. Everything is encapsulated by the stroke, the stroke you make. That's why whenever you're trying to make a stroke or trying to make, uh, trying to make a swing and you hit something in their backswing, right, you can be delegated a penalty, right? And that penalty uh, can, uh, is usually assessed either in the one or stroke two stroke per, uh, variety, and that just means you get one extra sh uh, stroke for the hole that you're on, right? So if I, if I commit a rule, rule violation, those are typically done in one or two stroke penalties, so you just simply add the one or two stroke that's delegated by that penalty, all right? So that's a stroke. And the, again, the reason we call it a stroke is because it can also happen on the swing. The, the penalty can happen on the swing, not just you making contact with the ball. Right? That's why we call it a stroke. Right? So we're trying to play the game to par. Now, we have different scores that we can get. Okay? So you might hear the uh, one under. Right? One under. That typically refers to if I've made a birdie. Right? So if I've made a birdie, that means I get one under whatever that par is. If it's a par three, that means I only hit two strokes. I only had two strokes on the hole. I hit the shot on the green or I hit it short and I either putted it in or chipped it in on my next shot. That's what we call a birdie. That's a two. The same, it would be the same if I made a three on a par four, right? If I made a four on a par five. So let's go ahead and look at this really quick. So hole one is a par four here, okay? It's a, I think Eagles Ridge is what this course is called. I don't know where this course is at, um, but here we go. So let's say I hit my shot. 
Let's say, go ahead and say I hit my shot. I'm going to give us a, a gold kind of thing so it shows up better on the on the screen for you guys. So let's say I've got a, a, a gold pin here, and I've got this par 4, and I'm starting from this tee box, right? And I'm going to hit the shot, and let's say I hit my drive right here. Okay, now my next shot is in green. This my second shot is in green. Let's make it a light green so it's easier to see, or let's go a bluish green. So we have a bluish green here, and my next shot goes on the green. So I'm right next to the hole. I've got a putt, and let's say my next shot, I hit it in. So we got it, and I putted it in. I made it. So I hit three shots, okay, or strokes, same difference. on the hole, right? And it was a par four. So that means I made a birdie. So I got, I write down three next to my name. I'm Zane. So I made a three. So I'm going to write the three down and then I get to do something fun. This is what every golfer loves seeing on their scorecard. They love seeing this polygon. Everybody, uh, you know, comment what a polygon is. I haven't been in school a while. Um, so I'm just kidding. So we got a uh, three here, right? So we're going to draw a circle around the three. Okay. That circle just shows me it's easier to count. That shows me that for that hole, I'm one under. All right. So let's go on to the next hole. The next hole is a par three. It's not a very short par three. It's pretty average length, right? 141 from the golds. So let's say I'm on number two. Okay, and I've got my tee box. My tee box is right here, 171 yards, and I hit it in that sand right here. So that's my first shot. It's in the sand. That's a hard shot. So then my next shot, I get up there, and I'm like, okay, I can do this. But I leave it short of the green. I leave it right here just short of the green in that fairway. And then I hit my chip. My chip goes up. It goes on the green but not in. And then I have to hit a putt, so my putt goes from here to there, and I sink my putt, right? So that right there is four shots, right? So I took four shots on a par three. Four shots or strokes on a par three. So I what I would do is I would go down here and write a four. Colors don't matter, right? So I, I write a four. And then that's what we call, if I'm one over par on the hole, that's what we call a bogey. Okay, so that's a bogey, all right? A bogey is an English word for booger, and we don't like boogers. Boogers are nasty, and so that's why we call it a bogey, because it's nasty. We don't want bogeys. We want pars, <laughs> okay? It's a little bit of a joke, but it actually does mean that in, in England. Um, so we see this, and we got to write a – we're gonna actually going to make it easier for us to count at the end, so I'm going to put a, a square around the four, Right, and that square is a bad polygon. We don't want squares. All right, Coach Zach is over here laughing at me. So I don't, I don't like squares. So the square is going to be that one over. So if I have a circle, one circle and one square, right, that's going to even out to par. So now I'm even par through two, right? Because four plus four plus three, right? If I had gotten a par here and a par here, four plus three is still seven, right? So, and three plus four is still seven. So even if I was playing against somebody, let's say his name is Bob, right? Bob's over here and Bob gets a par, right? He has four shots on the par four and he has three shots on the par three. We both have seven after the first two holes, okay? We both have seven out of the first two holes, right? So Because there's no more points de uh, delegated to a three than points taken away for a four, right? Right? If I get a if I get a bogey that's no that's no less valuable, right? Then the then uh, the three is as valuable, right? So it's just one stroke over par, one stroke under par, right? Um, so we got that. Now let's go on to the par four. Now let's talk about other other kinds of scores that we can get. Now you might be saying, Zane, what if I'm on a par four? And let's say I hit a shot from the tee box and hit it into the fairway. And then I hit another one and it goes in. What is that? That's not a birdie, right? That's not one under par. That's two under par. So that's minus two under par for that hole. Okay? That would be called what we call an eagle, right? It's just a big birdie. 
just a big old birdie, right? An eagle. I, I think it'd be cool if we went back in time and called it a hawk, a hawk. I got a hawk on that coal. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, but anyway, so we got an eagle, right? An eagle. I hit it in the fairway. I hit it in the hole. That's an eagle. Doesn't matter if I'm in the fairway. As long as I hit that shot, hit that, uh, hit that, um, Oh, we're on the part. So this is three right here. So if I hit that, uh, if I hit it in two, if I have a two only two shots on the hole with no penalties, that's what we would call an eagle. And so for an eagle, what I do is I write one circle, two circles. So I put two circles around that number. All right. Now I just had one of these this past week, um, a hole in one. So we have a, a par three right here. Right, par three. So if I hit it in one, if I hit it up and on the green and in the hole in one, that's what we call a hole in one, right? Because I only I hit, only hit one shot and it went in the hole. Okay, we also call it an ace. You can call it an ace, meaning one, right? Right. So it's, you can call it an ace, right? But I I I get a hole in one and the same. I'm gonna draw the same two circles around that number. For a par five, par five eagles are much, much easier than par four and par threes. So we see a par five. Par five would be a three for an eagle, right? This is going to be a great scorecard. Um, so I have a three, and I'm just going to draw a circle around this, a circle around this. And that would be, say, say this is hole seven. So I'm going to go up here to hole seven. And I, I'm hitting from my tee box. I hit one, and then I hit a massive shot into the green, and then I put it in. Right? That would be three strokes which would be an eagle. Those are the easiest eagles to make, being as, you know, you get more opportunities to knock it in the hole, right? The more opportunities you get to knock in the hole, the easier it is to make a lower score, okay? So the same, it's, it, and that works in the pros too. If you look at their par three average, that's much higher uh, against par than their par five average. Right? So these, in, in golf, we consider these par fives to be our scoring holes. These are the holes that we want to do really, really well on to kind of offset these par threes, which tend to be the harder holes. Okay? All right. So, and then at the end of the round, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up, say I got a par, I got a par, I got a three, I got a five, right? Let's say I, I add up all these. Now I want to add them all up. Okay? So let's just pretend that we're never going to see this score, but let's pretend we have one of us playing, right? Um, so we have me. Let's go ahead and write Bob again, Bob, and there's Zane, right? And so I'm going to write down Bob got a four. I got a four. Bob got a bogey. He got a four. I got a five, right? Okay, so that's a double bogey. So I'm going to put two squares. Double bogey just means two boogers, right? I don't like boogers, right? Two boogers is worse than one. So we got a, a five there. And then you've got a, uh, a uh, we're going to go, with, uh, I got a birdie after that. Let's say I got a birdie after that one. Uh, Bob got another par. Bob, play, Bob plays some boring golf. So he's going to go three, four, four, um, four. We're going to say he got birdie there. And then he got a three and then a five. So he shot 35, right? Because he went one over. One under, those cancel out, the rest were par, so he gets the par, right? Just an easy way to do math. And then I'm playing exciting golf. So I go, I go par, double, birdie, let's go birdie again, let's go uh, bogey, let's go birdie, let's go bogey, birdie. Wow, I'm doing really good on par threes right now. And then we go par. Okay, that looks very different than Bob's score, doesn't it? That looks very different. But if we look at the numbers, it's exactly the same. So one over, two over. So let's go ahead and count. Hold on. Let me change my color. There we go. So we got one over, two over. And then we got one under, one under. Okay, so these are canceled out. These are canceled out. Then we've got one over, one under. These cancel. One over, one under, these cancel. And so all I'm left with is pars. So that's a 35, right? Pretty awesome. Me and Bob tied. We both played very different golf, but we both tied at the end of the day. Okay? So this just goes to show you there's a lot of different ways to play well. And I should never, ever give up if I make a double. 
So if I make a bad hole, if I make a bad, uh, bad score on a hole, I should never, ever give up because I just tied Bob, right? And Bob played very boring par golf, right? So that's what we want to and, – and for us intermediate students, par should be looked at as a birdie. I want you guys looking at pars like birdies. That way whenever you – that way, whenever you get a par, you're super excited. It is a good accomplishment to get, make par out here, especially out here at Chicopee, where you know there's a lot of places to lose the ball. And because we're you know trying to get better, we got to look at pars as a great accomplishment. Don't try looking at pars like they're um, they're nothing, right? Look at them as that. Wow, that's an accomplishment. I had three pars today. That is awesome, right? So just remember that next time we're out there on the course. Um, so again, this has been Zane. Let's go on to our next component. So now we're coming to the end of the video, all right? So let's go ahead and talk real quick about ways that you, know, you can get better at golf quicker because everybody wants to know, how do I get better at golf faster, all right? The number one way is to watch a lot of golf. Uh, as growing up, growing up, the reason that I became so better a lot quicker is because I would watch golf with my dad on the weekends at home. Um, watching golf is com something that's falling out of popularity in youth. And so one thing you've got to remember is those guys that are on TV playing golf all the time, they're really, really good. And you should watch those players that are better than you, that play better than you. You should look at them and say, wow, okay, I want to look like that. Right. So that's the first thing is I just implore you, especially with the Ryder Cup coming up, make sure you watch a ton of golf. Watching golf is probably the best resource you have to getting better. It's one thing to be out here learning, trying to get the swing right and me trying to help you. It's a whole nother thing watching the sport and listening to the people that know what they're talking about. Talk about it and then, you know, putting it into practice whenever you go out there. If you listen very closely, they'll even give you help on how to practice, right? They'll even tell you how they practice, all right? So make sure you go do that, especially this next week with the Ryder Cup starting up. Please do that for me. That's your number one assignment. Number two, another way to get better is just by making swings. Whether it be at home with a PVC pipe or, or even a, uh, you know, a metal pipe or anything, right? A plastic pipe or even just a golf club. Go out, make swings. Get some wiffle balls from the store. Go throw them out in the yard and you know don't anger the parents. Make sure you're doing it in a place they don't mind. And just make swings. Just make swing after swing after swing. The more you do that and make contact with the face of the club, the better you're going to get at playing golf. All right? So that's number two. And the very last thing, the very last thing is make sure you watch videos like this. Always trying to learn, right? Watching documentaries of the greats, watching documentaries of other people who have made it on tour and made a, made a career out of this, or even just watching instructional videos online um, by the likes of Chris Ryan or uh, Keith Bennett on Instagram is a great uh, person to follow. Um, or even, I'm trying to think, um, uh, Top Speed Golf with Clay Ballard. These are all great uh, resources of information that you can use so that you can become better golfers, all right? The only way I learned how to, how to become a pro and teach this sport is by looking up at mentors like Gary Gilchrist at Gary Gilchrist Golf Academy, now IJGA, and Frank Mantua from US Golf Camps. Those are the ways that I learn how to be able to see things that maybe other people don't. Now, I'm, no long, I'm not, not as good as they are, um, by no stretch of the imagination, but that's how I learned to be able to see and be able to know what I'm doing and how to do it. And that's how you need to look at it too with these better golfers, these better players, and these better instructors, right? They put out this info all the time of how drills you can do to fix a certain thing in your game, right? And if you want to, you can come right to me and say, Zane, I saw this drill. Would this help? Right? And I'll be more than happy to help you. All right? So, Again, thank you guys for watching. Um, please like, share uh, this video, comment on it. Uh, make sure that you work on this stuff that we talked about um, and that you follow the assignments for next week's Academy program. Um, also look at us on Instagram, uh, at ZS Golf Academy, 
that'd be great if you guys could follow that. That's where we post a lot of the results from the um, from the Academy Cup, right? Um, to different stuff that we do here all the time. And um, yeah, I hope this has helped. I'll see you guys back here uh, tomorrow.